Welcome to r slash Entitled People, where we share stories from your lives about people who think the rules don't apply to them and they should get what they want. Thank you friends for subscribing to the channel and for so many likes. And today we have three great stories, so subscribe, hit the like button, and let's begin. The first story. Entitled relatives wrote a complaint about my work and it caused a rift in the family. The second story. The boss cheats me and I take away his client. The third story. Boss didn't want to raise his IT guy's pay because he wasn't visible. The IT guy finds a new job and quits. Now the former boss asks for help. The first story is... My aunt and uncle tried to get me fired over some crumbs. Then it tore the family apart. Some background. This happened around 5 years ago. I was 23 female. At that time I worked for a large cleaning and maid service chain that specialized in both household cleaning and commercial cleaning. I don't mean to sound braggy but I pride myself on my work ethic and ability to be highly productive. The first and only year they did this I managed to get the employee of the year status. Out of thousands of employees amongst hundreds of branches across Canada and the USA, which came with a cool $1,000 bonus. I was good at my job. I did special little things for clients, like fancy towel and toilet paper folds, nice vacuum lines, and was requested very often by clients. I had never gotten a customer complaint in the five years that I worked there. I don't know what happened with my mother's side of the family, but her siblings are full-blown backstabbing narcissists, some worse than others, that constantly made snide remarks. My mother's not as bad as them, but she definitely has some narcissistic tendencies as well. My grandmother is a sweet, open-minded, non-judgmental woman. So it baffled me that all four of her children ended up being so SH. The four of them all married equally as SH people. Anyway, on to the story. My one aunt and uncle who were the worst of the bunch moved and needed a new house cleaner. They remembered that I cleaned houses, so they called my boss and signed up with the company I worked for specifically requesting me. I came into work the next day and my boss tells me the news, that my aunt signed up and asked for me to clean their house. Knowing how she and her husband are, I was very apprehensive and asked my boss if that was a good idea, as it would be a conflict of interest. Basically, I tried to say, F no, I ain't cleaning that bee's house in the most professional way possible. Well, regardless of my strong detest, my aunt was on my cleaning list the next day. I'll be honest, the first few cleans went totally fine. There were four adults living in my aunt's house at the time. My aunt, my uncle, their son, and my cousin who was in university, and my grandmother. So it was a lot of work to clean up after four adults in a huge house. But it was nice to see my grandmother every two weeks, and like I said, it was all going just fine. My grandmother and cousin were always home while I cleaned, and my aunt and uncle were usually at work. My gran was always so appreciative, saying how good of a job I do, and that she could see why I was deemed employee of the year. My mom was proud and told her about it. It was going fine, until one morning when I come into work and my boss has a confused and concerned look on his face. I ask him what's wrong, and he states that my first complaint came in. I was shocked and at this point after so many years I was on a pretty personal level with all my clients. So I figured if there were a concern, I would get told it directly. My boss then says, and it's from your aunt and uncle. Shock turned into rage, as my boss hands me over the printed out complaint email. I can't completely remember what it said, but I'll paraphrase as best as I can. I just remember it being extremely cold, and I was being referred to as your staff. I guess I was not worthy of a name. Dear boss, entitled aunt and I are writing this email in regards to a clean we had recently done by your staff. To say it was subpar is putting it lightly. When EA and I got home from work, we found crumbs all over the kitchen floor. High dusting was not completed. The high dusting he was referring to were nine foot tall shelves. I'm not allowed to climb ladders due to liability reasons. Hallways were not vacuumed and some other things seemed intentionally missed. We are very disappointed in your staff and think they should be reprimanded. The cleaning is just simply not good enough. We're only 98% satisfied, blah, 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 and so on and so forth. Regards, Entitled Uncle. I remember the email being about a page long, but that's basically the gist of it. My boss was shocked, I was shocked, and after explaining how my aunt and uncle are, he threw the complaint in the garbage. I told him I was not cleaning their house ever again, and he agreed this time, hallelujah. I got home from my work and was still upset about what happened. The fact that my family would try to get me reprimanded, the fact that they couldn't even use my name, the fact that they couldn't just come to me directly or email me if they had a concern. I called my mom and stepdad and told them what happened. I had taken a picture of the complaint email so I sent it to them. They were peeved, like more peeved than I thought they would be. My stepdad called my uncle and told him that he was a complete piece of SH. 
asked them exactly what their intentions were with that email, and why they would go out of their way to try and get their niece fired and reprimanded. Who the F does that to their own family? My uncle was a complete coward, and groveled an apology with his tail between his legs. After he got chewed out by my stepdad, he called me. I let it go to voicemail. He left a voicemail basically saying, why would you tell your parents about what happened? This was a professional matter that should have been kept between us and your work. The email was a misunderstanding. We're so sorry, Brookie. Oh, now I get a name? A nickname even? Please call me back so we can sort this out. I never called him back. I did send him an email though explaining why I was so mad. That perhaps the two adults who were always home made some crumbs after I left. And also why he was now dead to me. Once the rest of my family caught wind of what happened, I think my aunt and uncle told everyone to try to get them on their side. Spoiler alert, no one took their side. My aunt and uncle's children, my cousins, reached out to me personally to apologize for their parents' behavior. My grandma apologized for her daughter's behavior and this whole thing essentially tore the family apart. My grandma moved out not long after. My mom didn't talk to her sister for a year. My stepdad still hasn't spoken to either of them since, and I haven't spoken to my uncle since either. It's been five years. The son that doesn't live with them also went no contact for quite some time. There have also been no family Christmas, Thanksgiving, or Easter dinners since this happened. Everyone knew that they were both POSs, but I guess this was just the straw that broke the camel's back for a lot of my family. The second story is, Boss forgets to give me my tip, so I stole the whole D client. I've been cleaning house with this lady we'll call Janet for over three years. About half the time I'm working with her and or another worker, the other half are houses I do on my own that she sets up for me. It's pretty low-key, unofficial, under-the-table work. Technically a subcontractor, but kind of treated more like an employee. I started a new house on my own through Janet about two months ago. This lady Petunia had broken her leg and needed some temporary help cleaning. Petunia would hand me a sealed envelope with cash labeled for Janet, which I would give to Janet, and Janet would give me my cut of each house I did at the end of the week. Some clients give me cash in hand or a check, sometimes in an envelope, sometimes not. Pretty standard. It's not really my business how much Janet charges each house, but I always try to clock it though, but Petunia was too new so I didn't know. Petunia was always grateful for my work, and I would do some extra things because she couldn't get out of bed. She asked me if she could pass along my info to friends who may want cleanings. I said of course, and happily gave her my phone number. I've been trying to branch out and get my own clients to make more money anyway. Then she said something about the tips she's been leaving in the envelopes. I must have looked confused because she asked me if I've been getting them and I said no I don't think so. This is my first time realizing Janet has stiffed me on tips. Petunia looked upset. She told me how her and Janet negotiated the rate in the very beginning. Petunia couldn't afford Janet's standard rate of $30 per hour for two hours, so they settled on $25 per hour. Petunia then just put $60 in the envelopes after the first cleaning, with the extra $10 intended for me. Petunia said she told Janet that the extra was meant for me. I told Petunia I would talk to Janet about it and not worry. I thanked her for bringing it to my attention, and thanked her for the tips anyway. The next day before I had a chance to talk to Janet, she actually texted me saying she forgot to give me an extra $5 from Petunia from the last cleaning. I still had the envelope from the previous day's cleaning. I asked Janet if she had talked to Petunia recently. She said no in a tone that was so obviously a lie. She claimed she had just realized she forgot about this tip when she was going through her scheduling calendar. I told Janet all about my conversation with Petunia. Janet said they did agree on the $25 per hour but she just thought Petunia was paying the original $30 rate instead of the $25. B.S. Petunia told me she told Janet the extra $10 was for me. I didn't want to blatantly call Janet a liar, but this has happened before, and I had zero reason to believe Petunia would lie to me. I didn't even bother bringing up the fact that Janet was now taking half the tip for herself, and how effed up I thought that was. In fact, the only time I get a tip is when the client actually hands it to me personally. If the tip is given to her, she splits it. Small tangent I do another house on my own through her that consistently leaves me an extra $5, which I get to keep and Janet doesn't know. Janet had to come the one time for something, saw the extra $5, and actually went to her car to get $2.50 to give to me and she kept the $5. Two single dollar bills, three dimes, three nickels, and five pennies. She made a joke about having to scrounge for the coins in her car. I was truly stunned and speechless. Janet pays me $16 per hour for houses I do on my own and have to bring all my supplies, vacuum, mop, and rags, and maintain it all. So that means doing laundry and cleaning my vacuum when needed, on my own time. So I generally earn slightly over half the total pay of each house I do on my own, and she earns just under half for setting up the appointment and being awful at communication. 
so Janet only gave me an extra $5 instead of the full $10. No extra back pay for the other cleanings I did for Petunia. I'm like, whatever, I'm not gonna make a big deal about extra money like that. It's petty, albeit annoying as hell. Tonight, Petunia canceled on Janet for the cleaning next week. This next thing happened so perfectly, I can't even believe it. Petunia texted me at 8.50. I told Janet I didn't need you, but I'd like to get you if you can work for me without being under her employment. Janet texted me at 8.52. Petunia's done with us. I told her if she needs an occasional cleaning to let us know. I'm thrilled. Good karma has never thrown me a curveball like this. I can actually save Petunia money and still make more myself. Win, 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 win. Except for Janet, I guess. And the last story is, Boss tells me I need to be more visible when I ask for a raise. Cool, quitting should make me visible. So I've been working at this big insurance company as IT support for years, more than I would like. Raises at the company have been non-existent since I joined. In the IT department, there's me, one other tech support, let's call him H, a QA lady and the manager. So the IT department is four in total. During the pandemic, it was hectic. To get all users connected, getting laptops ready and troubleshooting remotely with them, but we got it done. During this time, H is on medical leave due to chemotherapy. So obviously he needs his time and can't work. During this time, all his work is passed to me. This includes infrastructure and system projects. I now have to deal with offsite teams and manage a bunch of other projects. I got all of it done and also assist every local user plus international users. After more than a year of his battle with cancer, H unfortunately passed away. Now I've been doing the work for more than a year. A couple of months after H's death, I have an employee review meeting with my manager. Outline all the work I've done, the duties that I've taken over, and in my honest opinion, rightfully ask for a raise or a promotion. My boss's answer, in order to justify that I need you to be more visible. By visible, he meant assisting users out of work hours and that kind of stuff. I sit there in an awkward silence and just say, okay. Soon as we finish the meeting, I start to look to pivot from my current position. Find a field in IT I'd like to try and start to look at the requirements for said field. Spent around two months studying on my own through courses on Udemy, got the certifications I needed, and with those in hand and another four months of endless job applications, I was able to land a new job that pays more than twice what I was making. When I gave him my resignation letter, I had the biggest smile you could imagine. And I smiled even more when I saw his reaction when I told him I quit. To be honest, it baffled me that he asked me why I was leaving. My reply was short and sweet. I'm not visible. After I left, I was getting quite a few calls and messages from him, asking how to resolve some issues. I told him I'd be happy to help for a fee. He didn't like that part. I still talk with some people at the company. Apparently, my old manager has been struggling to find someone else to do all the stuff I was doing for the SH pay. So he's doing all the work and not doing it very well at that. Wonder if I'm visible now. Thank you for watching. Be sure to subscribe and hit the like button. Have a good day.